Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Today, inshallah, we're going to solve Cambridge exam, May, June 2022, paper 62. Let's get started. Question 1. Sodium hydrogen carbonate decomposes when heated. The products are solid sodium carbonate, water, and carbon dioxide. Here, from the diagram of the experiment, name the parts that are labeled A and B. A is a boiling tube used for heating and decomposing sodium hydrogen carbonate, and B is a measuring cylinder used for collecting carbon dioxide gas by down displacement of water. When sodium hydrogen carbonate was heated, a colorless liquid collected at the point X. Suggest the identity of the colorless liquid. Here, the products of the decomposition are solid sodium carbonate, carbon dioxide which is a gas, so the only liquid form it is water it will be here collected here at the point x so your answer would be water on the diagram draw an arrow to show where the apparatus should be heated during the experiment here we will draw an arrow directly below the sodium hydrogen carbonate to show the position of heat state an observation that would indicate that the sodium hydrogen carbonate had stopped reacting. When the sodium hydrogen carbonate is stopped reacting or stopped decompos decomposing, that means there is no carbon dioxide gas produced, so your observation will be no more bubbles is formed. Explain why it is important to remove the delivery tube from the water as soon as heating is stopped. Here is the delivery tube. It has to be removed from water as soon as we stop heating because by stop heating, the pressure inside this boiling tube will decrease. So water will be sucked back from the water trough to the uh, boiling tube, causing cracking or breaking the boiling tube. So your answer here, because by stop heating, the pressure inside the boiling tube will decrease and the water will be sucked back to the boiling tube, the tube will crack or break. Question 2. A student investigate the reaction between two different solutions of aqueous sodium carbonate, solution K and solution L, with dilute hydrochloric acid using two different indicators. Here are the steps of the experiment. The puret rinsed with water, then with hydrochloric acid. The puret was filled with hydrochloric acid, then some of the acid run out from the puret. Uh, measuring 25 centimeter cube of the solution K by measuring cylinder, then pour them into the conical flask. Then we will add five drops of methyl orange indicator and five drops of thymolphthalene indicator. We will add hydrochloric acid from the puret to the conical flask until the solution turns yellow, and this will be the first color change. Then more dilute hydrochloric acid was, was added until a second color change is obtained. Here we have a diagram to show the results of the uh, experiment one, the initial puret reading, which was 1.6. Then the puret reading at the first color change, it's exactly 12. The puret reading at the second color change, which is 22.4. So to get the volume of hydrochloric acid needed at the first color change, we will subtract the reading of the first color change minus the initial reading, so 12 minus 1.6. We will get 10.4. To get the total volume at the second color change, we will subtract the final reading minus the initial reading, so it will be 20.8. We will repeat the experiment using solution L instead of solution K. And also here we have the period diagram for the reading, the initial, the first color change, and the second color change. Again, we will subtract the reading at the first color change minus the initial reading to get the volume at the first color change, and the final reading minus the initial reading to get the volume of the acid at the second color change. State the color, state the color change observed at the end point when 
dilute hydrochloric acid is added to methyl orange in alkaline solution. So the first color will be methyl orange in alkaline solution, which is yellow color. This will be the, the starting color, yellow. Then adding hydrochloric acid till the end point. It, this means the color of methyl orange at the end point or at the neutral media, which is orange. So the color change will be from yellow to orange. For experiment one, compare the volume of the dilute hydrochloric acid needed for the first color change to the volume needed for the second color change. So uh, referring back to the results of experiment one, here is the volume for the first color change and the volume of the second color change. As we can see, the volume of the first color change is half that of the second color change, or we can say that the volume of the acid needed for the second color change is double that of the first color change. So here, the volume needed for the first color change is half that needed for the second color change. Then we have to compare the concentration of solution K used in experiment 1 to the concentration of solution L used in experiment 2. And you should explain your answer. To compare between the concentrations of solution K and solution L, we need to know the volume of the acid needed in each case. So here, the total volume of acid needed is 20.8, and for solution L, it's 31.2. By simple calculation, we can know that 31.2 is 1.5 times 20.8. So the volume of acid needed to react with solution L is 1.5 that uh, is needed for solution K. So your answer here, we should mention that solution L is a higher concentration. It's 1.5 times is the concentration of solution K, and your explanation will be that solution L requires a volume of acid which is 1.5 the volume which is needed for solution K. Take care that the question is for three marks. The first mark is to write that solution K is higher concentration. Second mark is the solution L is 1.5 the concentration of solution K, and the third mark, of course, for your explanation. Uh, did use the volume of dilute hydrochloric acid needed for the second color change when experiment two is repeated using 50 centimeter cube of solution L. Uh, experiment two was done with 25 centimeter cube. So if repeated using 50 centimeter, we will need double the volume of the acid needed. So here, we need 31.2, double that will be 62.4 centimeter cube of hydrochloric acid. State why using 50 centimeter cube of solution L would cause a problem. So if we need, if we use uh, 50 centimeter cube of solution L, we will need 62.4 centimeter cube of the acid and that the volume of the acid will be more than the capacity of the purette because the purette can take only 50 centimeter cube of the acid. State the advantage of using a pipette and instead of measuring cylinder in this experiment, of course, the pipette is more accurate. Explain why the conical flask was swirled at, uh, as the dilute hydrochloric acid was added. We will swirl the flask after each addition of HCl to mix the solutions. At the start of experiment one, the burette was rinsed with water and then with dilute hydrochloric acid. At the start of experiment two, the conical flask was rinsed with water but not with solution L. Explain why the conical flask was rinsed with water. The conical flask at the start of experiment two is rinsed with water to clean the flask from any residue left from experiment one. Why? The conical flask was not rinsed with solution L in experiment 2 because if we rinse it with solution L, we will add more volume of solution L in the conical flask. So that will need more hydrochloric acid to react than the, uh, the needed and will give 
uh, false results. Question three, solid M and solid N were analyzed. Solid M with iron three nitrate. Here is the formula of iron three nitrate and tests were done on each substance. First, we will make tests on solution M, solid M, solid M dissolved in water to make solution M. Then we divide it into two equal portions. The first portion of solution M, we will add sodium hydroxide added gradually then in excess and sodium hydroxide added to solution contain metal ions it will form metal hydroxide here we will have iron 3 hydroxide which is red brown precipitate so your observation will be red brown precipitate and you have to complete the observation what will happen in excess this red brown precipitate will not dissolve in excess the product from, uh, from the step A was transferred into a boiling tube. What is the product from A? We have iron hydroxide and of course when iron nitrate reacts with sodium hydroxide we have also sodium nitrate. So we will take sodium nitrate in a boiling tube we will add aluminium foil and the mixture was warmed gently any gas produced was tested. As we can see boiling uh, add this solution in a boiling tube and warm with aluminium foil. This is the test for nitrate ion. And when heating nitrate ion with aluminium tubes, aluminium foil in a test tube, we will have ammonia gas produced and the observation will be red litmus paper will turn to blue. This is the test for ammonia gas. So we to identify the gas ammonia is formed. The second portion of M, we will add dilute nitric acid followed by few drops of aqueous barium nitrate. Barium is used to test for sulfate ion and here we don't have sulfate. The, uh, the salt is iron 3 nitrate. No sulfate ions present, so your observation will be no change. Then, test on solid M. First, a flame test was done on the solid. The flame becomes red we have lithium ions that get red color on the flame the flame test give red color so it may be lithium cations then we will dissolve solid m in water to form a solution for the first part in the of the solution we will add nitric acid followed by aqueous silver nitrate silver nitrate is used to test for halide ions chloride, bromide, iodide ions. Here, the observation no visible change, so we don't have any halide ions. Test three, we will add hydrochloric acid, then warm the solution and test for the gas produced using acidified aqueous potassium manganate. The, the color of the aqueous potassium manganate will change from purple to colors. So this is the positive result for testing sulfur dioxide gas. Here, sulfur dioxide gas produced. So here, identify the gas produced in test three. It's sulfur dioxide. And identify solid N. Here, the cation is lithium. And the anion is sulfide that produce sulfur dioxide gas. So the solid N will be lithium sulfide. Here we come to the last question, the experiment. Here we have coffee beans. Caffeine occurs naturally in coffee beans. It's a white crystalline solid. Very soluble in hot water, but much less soluble in cold water. Plan an investigation to obtain pure crystalline sample of caffeine from coffee beans. Here we have a note, all other soluble substance in the coffee beans are very soluble in both hot water and cold water. So only caffeine is soluble in hot water only, but all other substances are soluble in both cold water and hot water. So the first step here in the experiment is to grind coffee beans. You have to write the tools used for grinding, so we will write grind coffee beans using mortar and pestle to obtain powder. Then we will add water to the powder 
and steer well to max. Heat the mixture and then filter the mixture. Allow the filter to cool. We heat so caffeine can be extracted in hot water. When we filter, the caffeine will be in the filtrate. The, by cooling, the caffeine will crystallize out from the filtrate because it is not much soluble in cold water. So allow the filtrate to cool. That means the caffeine will crystallize out from the filtrate. Filter out the crystals, then wash it with distilled water. That's how we can obtain pure crystalline sample of caffeine from coffee beans. Here we come to the end of our exam. Comment down below if you have any question. Thank you for watching. Wish you all best of luck.